I hate when I get a steak and I'm like, okay, I want it medium rare. And then they bring it back and it's well done. It's like, how do you mess oh. that up? Yeah. It's like, how do you mess that up? You know, how do you mess that up? But at the same time, it's like, okay, well, if I really wanted it done, I should have just bought a steak from the store and went and, and yeah, bought and it and, and do it itself. It's the same thing with raw. It's the same thing. Um, like even if, when you're doing videos, it's the same idea of like, when you take a video, you're not just going to most likely upload what you shoot. You're going to go through and you're going to make it the way you want to make it. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode, the fourth episode of the Behind the Lens, Behind the Lens which I almost called it my podcast, which that's fine. Um, but I have the same amazing shirt on because it's the same day. Uh, that's besides the point. Uh, we, we recorded back to back because we are talking again, once again, about camera settings camera part two, settings. which I am sorry if you all are like, Ben, Daniel, can you guys just hurry up and actually do some like photography lessons or video? We're getting there, okay? You got to start with the basics. You got to start with your cement before you add the foundation. You know? That's right. And just yeah. so you know, the amount of time that I told about the only three settings yeah. last week, I mean, like 30 minutes ago, but last week for you, yeah. I could talk five times as much time, just about he, only those three He times. actually does talk quite a bit about those, even when it has nothing related to what we're talking about. He still somehow comes back to those because yeah. they are that important. And like, that's what I think you even said last week was like, you need to make sure that you get and understand these because it's going to make yeah. one, your job as a photographer so much easier. Your job as a videographer is so much easier. So when you go to sit down to edit, like what we do quite a bit, like it makes everything so much easier. You're not sitting there for hours like, oh, I got to adjust the color. Oh, yeah. I got to adjust yeah. this. So that is why it's so important to go through those. Um, we, we I just want to reiterate that um, as we move on to kind of the the second tier of settings. Um, and like I said, if we, if you missed last week or you didn't watch the end of it, you should have, um, we are pushing back our accessories cause it's supposed to be accessories today. We're pushing back to next week. So we're gonna have accessories next week. And then we really don't know after that it's, we decide kind of whenever. So but maybe you, decide. yes, you can comment below about that. So anyways, Daniel, why don't we start off with, uh, we know it's gonna be one of my dad's favorite topics yes. because he yes. loves to say this on every comment. So when it comes to camera settings, there's a whole lot of settings. Oh, yeah. Uh, in most cases, I know exactly what they do. Some <laughs> I never used, so I'm not 100% sure what they he do. He might exactly. semi be guessing. Who knows? Uh, but one thing for sure, these settings, I don't know as much like in, I don't have as much in-depth knowledge of these as I have. So with if the you first have, three. if you have some in-depth knowledge, share it below so that way people can see it yeah 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 please share so the first setting that is on my screen is called quality and there are quite some options there's one which is basic which is going to result in a 4.8 megabyte photo Ooh. and right now with my what's a megabyte daniel i'm just kidding we don't have to go into detail on that <sighs> we, if we went to one detail, megabyte is yeah. 1024 <laughs> kilobytes which is one million. <laughs> and, and I'm not gonna bore you with. Anyways, that. we're just. I was just joking. Anyways, continue. so you, there's there's plenty of options. There's basic. There's normal. There's fine. And then there's raw. Oh, that's my dad's favorite. He loves raw. What is the difference between the so fine, normal, and basic? Are what you would see as a JPEG photo. Yeah. So when you open up your computer. Uh, you open up a picture, it's usually in either PNG, JPEG, JPG, or um, some other, we're, these are the main formats. Some other iterations. Uh, or there might be a file, and it, if it's taken with an icon, it's something, something, th something, dot NEF. Or if it's a Canon, then it's a CR2. Or if it's a Sony, then it's something. Oh, it's been a couple of years since I used a Sony. But that's a different form because raw. What is raw? Do you want to tell them? It's so I always say raw is this way. First off, I uh, want a fun fact about my camera. My camera doesn't shoot raw. It does not, which is a very fun fact about the yeah about the M50. I love the M50, <laughs> but then 
when someone's like, can you shoot these pictures in raw? And I'm like, um, no, I can't. Um, I can, my camera can't, but I can. Yeah. It, it's raw is an interesting terminology. I always think because, um, whenever you shoot like a JPEG, like you talk about, or a PNG, um, raw, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Cause Daniel knows this probably better than I do, but raw is more or less, it's kind of like, it's raw. It's not, it's, it's not an, as, it's not as filled in yes, and filled it, out. It is an on process. Yeah. So it's image. not like, it's like when you get a J, so like my camera for a great example. Um, I'll actually probably put a, a picture up of my, on my, for my camera. It's, you're going to basically get a more, I call it filled in picture. It's not going to be the, the kind of the rawness per se of kind of that natural way it looks. Um, whereas raw, that's why most photographers like, you talk to any of them peter mckinney or whoever what do they always say raw is the way to go yeah. including my dad when you, when you look at when you think about it raw think about it this way meat oh here we go you buy i knew he was gonna go to a meat a good, analogy a good please go steak i've had too much pork any kind of steak <laughs> yeah i've had too much pork lately you buy a good chuck and chuck and i don't know I was a, it's a, it's been a, a good, a, a, a good, a, a good sirlo a sirloin, a sirloin. Oh, yes. good, good sirloin. sirloin, good sirloin. So we're arguing about me. When you, when you get a good, when you want to eat a good sirloin, you have two options. You can either buy one that is raw mm -hmm. and you can make it for yourself the way you like it, mm -hmm. or you can buy one that is already made for you in a restaurant, for example. The, the downside of that is that you don't know how or who made it or what was the thought process behind that. When you get a raw meat, whether it's a sirloin or anything, you can decide, okay, this is how I like my steak. I like it medium rare and, and I will make it just like that. Mm -hmm. If you buy, if you get it from a restaurant and you, you might say medium rare, but it yes. might not come back medium rare. Or, or like they might not even ask you what uh, so kind of, that happens what kind too. you want. And they're just gonna give you one that they think is the best. The same with with picture. When you shoot in raw, afterwards you have the potential to make it into whatever you want. There's yeah. a lot more uh, opportunities with it. On the other side, when you're making a JPEG uh, image, that's already processed, and it's processed according to what this camera or like Nikon thinks is the best uh, processing for that specific image. Yeah. Which might not be the way you like it, but it might be. Who knows? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's all according to your taste. If you, the good thing with JPEG is that if you shoot JPEG, you don't have to do anything with that. Yeah, you can just upload it to Instagram, upload it to Facebook, upload it to MySpace, MySpace, Twitter. <laughs> I use kidding. Twitter. I don't have MySpace. But, but the downside of shooting raw is that most computers or most. Uh, Platforms don't necessarily understand. Yeah, they that, don't take it. They don't, they don't take, don't take it. it. Yeah, yeah, they don't accept it. So you have to, you have to export it as a JPEG, or you can edit it through. Yes, you can stuff edit which through, we will talk about in future episodes through Lightroom or or which Photoshop or you know a lot of other programs. Uh, there are some like for example MacBooks. You you can open an, a raw image uh, with a space bar. With a quick view and it's gonna show you exactly what it looks like mm -hmm. on, on PC. You can just double click on the on the raw image and it's gonna show you what it looks like. Uh I'm not sure if, if you can upload raw images to Instagram or Facebook. I don't think you can. Uh because I dad's always had to I think go through yeah editing. But and, please and, tell us if you can and it makes I, sense. I it, it would make sense yeah. because raw the reason why you shoot raw is so that afterwards you can edit it. If and, you don't want to edit pictures, well, then don't shoot. Raw. Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's like, you know, my dad, and he could probably attest this better than us. He started out when he was learning shooting with JPEG and just shooting it. But then when he learned and after he watched videos of people and he, like videos like us, talking about it, he went, oh, I want to be able to determine what my picture looks like. If yes. you want a little bit more light in your picture, you want a little less shadows in your picture, which is terminology we'll get to in a future episode. But when you when you want to take, like you said, a steak, I hate when I get a steak and I'm like, okay, I want it medium rare. And then they bring it back and it's well done. It's like, how do you mess oh. that up? Yeah. It's like, how do you mess that up? You know, how do you mess that up? But at the same time, it's like, 
okay, well, if I really wanted it done, I should have just bought a steak from the store and went and, and yeah, bought and it, do it for and, and do it itself. It's the same thing with raw. It's the same thing. Um, like even if, when you're doing videos, it's the same idea of like, when you take a video, you're not just going to most likely upload what you shoot. You're going to go through and you're going to make it the way you want to make it. Yeah. You and it goes back. Edited, yeah. Graded, and it goes back front, to the, the end. It and goes back to the front, uh, to the first episode we had where we said it's creativity. It's you're an artist. Yeah. yeah. Just like, I know he, this dude's amazing. I mean, he'll be humble and say he's probably not that great, but he is honestly amazing. Yeah. <laughs> he's amazing at what he does. So I, when he says, you can customize it. That's a, I think a word we should do yeah, is customize is good. when you customize it the way you want it. So that way when your client or your church or whatever you're shooting for goes, Hey, we want this to look this way. Boom. Right there. You got it. And that yes. makes sense. Yes. And, and we're going to go into more details about how you can edit raw yes. when we get to editing, Absolutely. because just about editing raw, I could talk, I could sit here and talk. <laughs> until next week's episode yes, it's <laughs> there's yeah. just so many so many things that you can do uh but we're not gonna do that the, the but I, I would mention one more downside of shooting oh, raw yeah. which is the file size oh dear lord shooting a raw <laughs> image is going to result in a 25 to 30 megabytes which file but imagine shooting about what 40 pictures in a setting you're talking that's yeah. a lot of space when i take a picture with my iphone the, the image that, it's that like comes what, 9. out it's six something like that less than that the, the size yeah no yeah. I, it's, it should be like a, like a few megabytes yeah 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 so you it can, is not big you yeah. can take 10 pictures with the iphone and one with raw setting yeah when on the others like and and you can even like see uh on the settings here like for raw it says that it's around 36 megabytes and for a basic image it's 4.8 you know that's yeah. how much difference with the size is because Yes, it's an unprocessed image with a lot of metadata, which is that's a word a that we're going to describe whole, yeah. later on. Uh, but it has just so much information in it yeah. that is just eagerly waiting for you to customize it and, and do with it whatever you want. It's like imagine you went to a, um, you were online, you know, we all shop online and you, you know, you see, I know like, especially now I have friends that they buy cars online or they'll design cars. Imagine that's what it's like, a, a, just a blank car and you get to turn everything, the leather, yes. the paint, the tires, the yeah. amazing stereo, whatever. It's that idea. And that's why it's gotta be so big. And again, but that's what, in a, in a sense, it's almost like a double-edged sword because it makes it so cool and so awesome. But then it's also like, oh no, I, I got a clear space, which can yeah. also, that's, we're also... Another accessory we will talk about for later, later on is a external hard drive. So that's yes, another, that's yes. another day in another job. So that's raw. And we already we, spent just, uh, about 11 minutes on that one. Whew. Okay. I'm going to promise I'm going to be faster. So next setting is actually on my camera. It's on the side, which is the release mode. Uh, and mine has seven different release modes. One is single frame, continuous. L, continuous age, quiet shutter release, self timer, delayed remote, and quick response remote. Um, and mine is on, mine is actually on the screen, the screen, the screen, uh, the screen uh, in a queue. So I'll, I'll show you that. So, yeah. But the, they're basically, they're different settings for how to yes. shoot. So obviously, self timer means that you set it and you make sure you the, turn that off though once you're done. Yes. Because yes. I've had an issue where I'm like, smile, guys. Uh, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's Ten more seconds. Uh, <laughs> so obviously, you 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 choose that. You press the shutter button and you wait five seconds. That's seconds, usually when your whatever. dad runs in from, like my dad runs yes. in from behind the camera. He's like, yeah. "Hold yeah, on, yeah, scoot yeah. over." So yeah, that's that's, kind of that's an obvious setting. Uh, the other one is single frame. Yeah. Which means that when you're pressing the button, you're shooting one image. One shot, yeah. Then you have to release the button, press it again mm -hmm. for one more shot. Uh, when it comes to continuous. Obviously, you press it, and, and it keeps going. Uh, every camera has a specific frame rate when what it comes it? to shooting. Mine is six frames per second, I think, Mine, or seven. Mine might be six. I don't remember. Yeah, there are some that, like that, like, what it means is how many pictures, like, full-size pictures, yep. it can shoot in a, in a given second. Uh, so this means that I can take six pictures in one shot. Uh, you see a lot of you good. see a lot of sports photographers. Yeah, use that, it's good for sports it because when it comes to portrait, again, 
you you don't, you don't need continuous. <laughs> like you take a picture, you have a time. Okay, I look at it. Good. Move on. Not good. Okay, I take another one. When it comes to sports, you don't have time. You da, 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 da. okay. There's for sure one of them that is going to be in focus. That is going to be the right frame. Because you don't have time to stop and look. Yes, and yes. You have out. to be on the go, and and you have to go move on and and make the next one. So, yeah. And there's well, there's quiet shutter release. I don't. Which, do you use that very often? I I don't use it very often. But so when we were doing, so you remember how we talked about in the first episode. The difference between mirrorless and DSLR, yes. how there's no mirror in yours mm-hmm. because it's mirrorless, uh, which means that when you take a picture, there's nothing to flip to make that annoying sound and then flip back. That he you don't like. <laughs> yes, it, it's not useful when it comes to like shooting pictures of kids when they make a decision for Christ and they're talking with their counselors and they're praying it's really and crying and sort of annoying at times. Yes, it's annoying and and you don't you just don't want to do that. There's so there's the quiet shutter release which I'm not saying that camera manufacturers edit to cameras because of this uh, instance, but it kind of like dams the sound uh, yeah. when that the camera makes, the mirror makes when it flips. It's not completely quiet, but it's more quiet than yeah. when it's not turned on. So it's kind of a useful but useless tool. Yeah. <laughs> and, they're each, and, and each time you use some of these, like, there, we're not saying that one's better than the other. We're not saying, you know, you, you can choose whatever. Like, when it goes back to RAW. Like, you can choose JPEG. Like, if that's what you yeah, want to do. Yeah. Again, these are just, we're just trying to let you see all the options and to learn all the options. So that way, when you go out there and you're like, I can't remember, mess around with it. Like, honestly, like he said, you know, I think it was last episode, you said, like, just go out there and, and try. And yeah. if you fail, you try. fail. I know for me, some of my worst videos, again, watch this. Go to my, you're on my YouTube page. Click my YouTube page. Go down to like the first couple episodes. They're or a couple of videos. They're terrible, um, but the they are. Bad. <laughs> uh, but as you grow and as you and as you gain, like I feel like I'm better than I was two months ago. I feel like I'm better than I was in a week ago. But as long as you keep going, I mean, it's just like life. You know, we're gonna fail. Yeah. But if yeah. you keep trying, it's gonna make it that much better, and you're gonna feel confident. I think you can say that when you started. You were kind of like, oh, well, here we go. We got to do this. But if you have that attitude, like we have to do this to get better, it, it helps you yeah. out in the long run. Yeah. Okay, moving on to some other settings. And we might not even talk about all of them because yes. some, some of them, them are yeah. not really useful. But the one that is really, really useful and you're going to make sure, you have to make sure that it's set properly is wide balance. Yes, because uh, if you watched a podcast episode about a month and a half, no, two months ago, this guy had used my camera previously and had messed with my white balance. Me, because I was ignorant and decided not to check, I looked like an orange pumpkin. Um, yes. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to get that off my chest. It's been <laughs> on my sorry. chest. <laughs> so, there are multiple settings for... It's also what happens uh, when you have a manual. The guy likes the manual. Yeah. So, there's there's multiple settings for uh, the white balance. And that means white light, by the way. Or like Basically, the, the what it, yeah, is the the... The temperature, the light, like the light we're using right now, we have an, a mix yeah. of both so white and imagine yellow. a scale. And wait, so how are you watching? This is <laughs> doesn't matter which side is which. I is it flipped? Is it not flipped? I don't. Doesn't remember. matter. Okay, let's l- move from the lower number. Okay. So let's say that that um, for Y buzz, if you're setting thirty five hundred, that's for that's really orange. Yes, that's for like, like pumpkin orange. Yeah, that's that's like a orange. that's a warm color. That's it's a warm, warm color. color. Yes, and then when you go that gets into color all the way on on the the temperature scale to ten thousand Kelvin, that's it's gonna cold. be really cold. Yes, that's gonna be a blue color. Uh, basically, when you're on the North Pole, you want to take a picture of penguins. <laughs> it's it's gonna be. A cold environment with cold light. Uh, so you're going to have your white buns on the colder side of the spectrum. Why would you choose penguins? I love penguins. <laughs> but when you're in the Sahara Desert uh, and everything is orange around you and the light bouncing back is orange and the whole, the the temperature of the light is... You're just taking pictures of the desert? Do we have an animal or are we just taking pictures of the desert now? Of a camel. Gosh. 
This is what I deal with on a daily. Anyway, continue. Well, it doesn't matter. You want your white bands to be on the the warmer side. Yeah. Because the water, the water, the 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 light temperature is on the warmer side. Yeah. So you like when like taking picture in a desert using cold white balance, you just look at it and you see that it's just wrong. Yeah. Like completely wrong. The same when you take picture. Like, okay, you don't have to go to North Pole, but you go out here to the campus in the middle of the winter when yeah. it's all snow everywhere, and you take a picture and you're using a really, really warm yeah. uh, white balance, you're going to see that that's just not right. Yeah. Uh, you, and and you're when you take a picture, you're going to see uh, kind of what is good for what. Uh, but there are some presets in your camera, for sure, uh, like indoor lighting and and direct sunlight flash uh cloudy and there's some preset manual which is the best one to use it's basically you're taking a picture of a white sheet or something really like actually yeah. white uh like me no uh, <laughs> like this this sheet of paper behind you you're taking a picture of that and then you're telling the camera in the menu setting that that should be the reference point yeah uh, so the reference point is not my skin. It's not uh, anything else. It's a white piece of paper that you take a picture of and you're like, okay, that's what white is supposed to look like. And then it's going to adjust everything else based upon that. Yeah, that that's white balance. I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's like, you didn't, okay, necessarily like you want to know it, but it's not something like if you yes. don't understand it, it's not going to. Yes. You can put it on auto, yes. honestly. You can use it auto. It's going to be completely fine in most cases. Uh, one thing when it comes to editing pictures, if you're using raw images, then later on you can adjust the, the, white, temp, the, the white balance and it's not going to destroy the image. If you're using JPEG and you mess up the white balance and you took a cold picture in the middle of the Sahara, uh, you can go back to Lightroom and you can adjust the color temperature but it's just going to mess the picture up yeah, big time. Uh, so that's another reason why you, you could or you should use RAW for taking pictures. Uh, another one, which is kind of interesting, is auto delighting. Auto daylighting, I think, is the actual name. There are some, like, again, there are some presets, extra high, high, normal, low, auto, off. Uh, what it does is that it, it kind of, when you're taking a picture of something that has a high contrast, so you're, you're taking a picture, let's say of a house, uh, and it has some backlight. Uh, and so the part of the house that you're taking pictures of is like really dark. It's in the shadows, but the light, the, the sky is really bright. So auto delighting is going to help to compensates for that big mm -hmm. contrast and it's gonna kind of help the the shadows to be brighter and the the highlights to be yeah dimmer or or darker a little bit it's not gonna obviously fix if you ruin the picture but it's a little bit of help uh to make those high contrast yeah images look better yeah i again i'm one that i didn't really learn white balance until uh, like I talked to my dad or I would watch videos. So again, you can make, especially if you're doing videos, like he, photography is kind of his thing for me, like for videos, it's important, especially if you're doing certain interviews, but for the most part, you can get away with auto white balance because a lot of times when I'm doing videos, I'm not worried about, you know, the certain look necessarily yeah. just getting the information across. Um, but if I'm working for like a wedding, like I did a wedding, I wanted to make sure my light was good and that yeah. I didn't have yeah bad view and everything like that is there anything else that we should touch base uh real quick there are two things on my uh bottom right corner called exposure exposure compensation and flash compensation i never use them i never use flash so i never use flash compensation uh which is a no-brainer uh if you're not using flash then you need to compensate for that because it doesn't exist and the other one is exposure compensation I never use that. Either. Yeah. If like, that's why an ND filter is good because then even if you 
could mess up the brightness of the image. Yeah. Uh, you can still use the sunglasses that we talked about in the last episode. So those two, I never really use them. Uh, oh, one that is really good is picture control. Picture control is kind of a preset that your camera is going to apply to the image that you're taking automatically mm -hmm. or, the, or the video or whichever. Uh, there are certain ones that you can choose. There's the oops, there's the standard, which is going to be give you a standard picture profile. There's a neutral. There's a vivid, which obviously is going to increase the, the the saturation a little bit. So it's yeah, obviously it's going to be more vivid. Oops. Then there is monochrome, monochrome. Yeah, monochrome, monochrome, monochrome yeah. which is going to give you a black and white image right away uh i think if you're using that then it's not gonna be a raw image yeah it won't be because it's already edited yeah or if, i don't know because there's also the in the effects you can yeah. use monochrome and for sure that one gives you a a jpeg it's not gonna give you a raw image um and then there is Portrait, which is gonna do again something landscape. This one is something that I never really use. There, in the when you go to the menu, actually, there is a place somewhere where you can. Oh yeah, you can manage picture control. Yeah. So you can tweak them a little bit. Uh, so what I did is I choose neutral and I changed it to, well, to look like more. A log video yeah uh which is that really gray image that you can see yes i had to edit videos. that yes i had to edit that today uh while we're recording this i had to edit some of his but what well, wasn't you but it was yeah the camera so that is it's again it's something that is going to give you more space to grow and yeah. to customize and and uh change some of the settings when it comes to like grading it or editing yeah. it in lightroom uh yeah, I, I don't like to use like the vivid or the portrait because yeah. it automatically just bumps up the contrast, it bumps up the saturation. And when you have a high saturation in high contrast image, you cannot really lower that. Yeah. Uh because you're already losing a lot of detail in the parts that are like pitch black or really like washed out white. And you cannot remove yeah. that. You cannot turn that back. But when you lose a low contrast image, then there's a lot more detail and you can change that afterwards when it comes to post-production and you can make those even like go darker, go lighter, whichever you prefer. Uh, but for me, the reason why I customize the neutral profile is so that afterwards when it comes to post-production, which I love, love to do, uh, I have more place to grow and, and to customize it the yeah. way I want it. Like a raw steak. Yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's basically... No, it's not really like raw, but it's kind of like raw. Yeah. It, if you use that, it's going to give you more space. Yeah. And so that is the best we could do. I mean, the amount of speed we went through these. Uh, honestly, I think both of us can say that we could spend five episodes on set on each set, like each setting we could spend an episode. Yeah. But we want to give you a general, and I know you're about to add something. What do you want to add? Yes, just something to add real quick. Uh, I don't know about your... Yeah. Uh, Men, uh, screen screen Men. or like how it looks like yeah uh the interface but the good thing with this is that even if you're using the camera and you're not completely sure what each setting yeah. does exactly uh the, when you go to change the setting and there are the different options yeah. uh there's the question mark that you can press and it's going to give you a little description of what the setting is um uh, Obviously, if there are some technical terms that you don't understand, then this is not going to help because it has some technical yeah. terms in it too. But on the other side, if you are not 100% sure about what to do or how to change mm -hmm. the setting or what exactly that thing does, you can just press the question mark button and it's going to help you to understand it a little bit. But Exactly. So that is the basics of camera settings over the last two episodes next week we'll be covering accessories and then we'll figure out from there so yep. uh thank you so much remember comment below add your questions add your comments we want to hear those uh we really do 
Uh, and then also we want to remind you uh, to like this video, subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell. Ba -boom. And then uh, as always, remember that God is faithful and you can trust him every time. So once again, thank you so much. Daniel and I love doing this. We love being with you. And as always, we'll talk to you next time. <laughs>